Hi there. Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. So today we're going to be doing the full review of the Pulsar RXQ or something like that. RXQ 30V uh, thermal weapon sight. And I did a little quick overview of the specification and stuff last week. And this week I'm going to be going a, a full review of the performance. How well it works at different distances and environments. Uh, but first let's mention uh, what I found I don't like about it. And the main thing is the buttons on top. They're just, they're, they're, they're not very tactile and they're hard to get to. It does have this remote control that comes with it, and it's a little, it's a little thing on a piece of Velcro. You could stick it on your gun somewhere convenient, uh, where it's easy to access. And I don't think it's waterproof, which is a con which is my big concern with it. It might be though. I can't swear to that. I don't. I just really don't know. So I put it on the side here, and it's a lot more tactile uh, than the buttons on top. They work. You can use them, and maybe you put a little dimple of something in the center here, a little dimple of glue. It would be easier to find. But it, it needs it needs something there to make it so it's easier to find those buttons. Uh, and my other my other little hash I have with this scope is the battery cover uh, it's a little bit too tight and it works great with most batteries but with like the streamlight batteries it was it was uncomfortably tight when putting it on uh, so that's my other other little complaint both features work uh, they work they work decently well and uh, I don't I don't find they uh, they uh, prevent the use of the scope that much but those are the two things I've find problems that's what I would pick on okay let's go ahead and look at the specs uh, not the specs but the uh, the performance so we're going to go ahead and take this out to 100, 200, and 300 yards uh, looking, at, looking at someone. We're going to see how well they perform in this day and night conditions. Then I'll go ahead and look at some scenery uh, when it's sunny out and uh, when everything is warm, when it's overcast and even. We're going to go ahead and take a look at when it is raining. And then just for fun, we'll, we'll take some pot shots and some targets uh, with this rifle right here and see how easy it is to actually use it on a rifle at night shooting at small targets. Okay, let's get started. That's enough talk. Okay guys, here I am. I've got my uh, Pulsar scope right here, and we're going to do some testing. Right now it's daylight, uh, it's overcast, as you can see, and um, temperature's about 40 degrees. Um, everything is slightly moist, it's not wet though, and uh, there's gonna be there's low contrast between objects because of the overcast, and uh, all the objects are about the same temperature. And we're looking to look at 100, 200, and 300 yards. Uh, this is a person out there standing out there. All right, check it out. The daylight hours. Okay. Run to 200 yards. 200. Get see if we get lined up on him. Guys, here we are at uh, 200 yards. Still daylight. Here we are looking through our scope. Wow. These are chickens here in the foreground at about 100 yards. All right, it's 200 yards during daylight. Overcast, 300. We're looking through. Uh, we're looking through this this brush right here. And uh, for reference, he was out there at 200, and he's moving out to 300. 300 yards is going to be way down there. Okay, folks, so here we are at the quite the distance of 300 yards. And there is our target glowing quite brightly down there. Yeah, it looks a little better than the naked eye. Through the scope, the camera doesn't quite, it kind of over oversaturates uh, too much. All right, there is a 300. And I'm going to uh, give him a quick order. All right, there we go. Now we're focused. So there's 300 yards. So you can see it's tricky to see what's going on down there. The contrast. I can see the trees. And uh, with a naked eye through the scope, you can see a little bit more. But uh, let's see. There we go. We're walking, we're walking along at 300 yards. And should we go behind some brush now? Yes, now it's behind the brush. Okay. Uh, so just for some reference, let's see. There it is, and I can I can kind of see him uh, with the naked. No, I can't see him with the naked eye. He's behind some some obscuring brush. But I can actually, if I can see him with a the thermal, and when he's moving, I can see him a lot better. There he is. He's way down there at 300 yards. All right, here we are, guys. It's uh. Totally dark. Looking at 100 yards. 
If it would focus. There we go. It's kind of blurry. But, uh... 200 yards! Alright. Let's see, here our targets go. About 100, 100, 120, and as I said, it's, it's, it's totally dark. You can recognize the scenery from what we're looking at during the day and how similar it looks. Change the reticle to this one. It's, it's easier to aim this way, but it can block small targets. Arrival at destination. All right, guys, so this, I believe, is 200 yards. Wave. Okay, there he is waving. 300. Okay, they're going on at 300. Alright. So that's 200. That's, that's two of them right there. And if you can see, that light is... Uh, there it's gone. That was their headlamp. Uh, there they are. And um, I'm going to tell them to uh, wave their arms. Stand apart and wave. You can see some waving action there. Continue. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, zoom in to 6x. There we go. All right, there they are at 6x, waving. And I'm telling them to return. There they are. They're returning. And I'm going to invert color palettes. So that's what they look like uh, in the black color palette. Black hot. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. There's the black color palette. Uh, that's where they were. So you can see this shows up scenery better. And I don't, I don't think, I mean, they stick out against this field, but I don't think they stick out as well as in white-hot mode. Okay, folks, here we are. We're on Black Hot. He's at about 50 yards right now coming at us. Um, and let's see if we can pan. If we can hold this camera. And here we're looking at that scene where we had those chickens down there. And, uh... You can see that that, that carport in the field. It uh, it shows up it shows up a lot better, and all the trees. Uh, you can see the trees a lot better. You can see a lot more details of the landscape on black hot. And I went ahead and turned the brightness down and turned the contrast up. So I'll go ahead and swap to white hot, and I'll show you how white hot uh, brings targets out. I think bring targets out better. But you can see the uh, you can see the chickens down there in the field. You can see the carport. I'm gonna go ahead and swap it. Push and hold this button right here. Should have swapped. Let's see. Yes. So you can see the targets really, uh, really stand out. Uh, and that carport kind of blends in. And let's see. And you can still see details. Uh, you can see that house down there at about half a mile. But uh, uh, the trees and the, and, and the details are, I don't, I'm not, I don't think it's easy to see. And this really becomes apparent after the sun sets. So let's go ahead and swap. All right. Now we're back on. Uh, color inversion mode, and you can see that house there is a dark spot. Targets just don't stick out so much on, on dark. But that landscape really shows up better. Let's go ahead and try the zoom function. So that you can see those chickens down there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press and hold. Uh, it's this button right here on the right side. And that'll kick our zoom up to about 3x. There we go, 3.2x. And um, it's definitely, they definitely bring, you can definitely see more uh, here on, on 3.2. It's not so blurry that it's worthless. It's easier to pick targets, individual targets out. Uh, and there's that carport right there. And let's go ahead and kick it up to 6, 6x, and that's less practical. And we'll go ahead and push that button again, push and hold. And let's see. Yeah, there we go. You saw that little icon that disappeared there. And here you can see it's all kind of fuzzy. Those targets come out and it's much easier. You can see there, we're looking at about 100 yards here. You can see the individual hens real well. And if you're actually going to um, take a shot at a target, it could, it, could, it could really help you. But 
unless you're pointing right at the target, you know, it's just it's just blah. It's just gray and it's not really gonna it's not really gonna help you much looking at their scenery. But actually once you once you've identified a target, yeah, it makes you pick it out a lot better. Now is the worst possible conditions for the thermal. Uh, I can still see trees. I can um, still I can see buildings better because those sides of them are somewhat dry because it overhangs. Vehicles off that are, aren't running are really hard to see. The metal just just blends right into the environment. Uh, okay, guys. So it is um, it is raining uh, just very lightly, light drizzle, but it's been raining heavier, so everything is soaking wet. And let's go ahead and we're going to take a look through this scope. But I can tell you right now, it looks very bad as far as landscape goes. Um, right here, we'll take a look at that. There, that there's a little, uh, it's a little uh, chasm in the rock and it is quite warm. It's always quite warm. And that's about what someone's going to look like or an animal's going to look like at this distance. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. You can still see that, but everything else, it looks bad. Let me go ahead and recalibrate. Alright, so we're on black hot. And let's see. So there is that cave right there. You can see it, you can still see, still see it. Um, and if I get the camera lined up properly. There are the trees on top. Uh, you can see them. And you can kind of see the, the, the line, the ridge line there. But other than that, um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult uh, to see anything, any anything else. Here's the foreground. Here uh, we're looking. We're looking up close. That's that. There's a gravel driveway, um, and there's a there's a post. There's a wooden fence post. But you can see. Um, let's get it, try to get our thing centered. Uh, it's it's quite bad. Uh, the, the contrast. Even though it's raining, there's a vehicle distinctly coming up at about 30 yards. There's a little critter right there. This is on white high. It doesn't. We don't really show up the, the trees too well. And there's some birds right there. Very little to see. Well, guys, it's definitely uh, resistant to rain. Got it's got some water on it. We're just out there looking for those squirrels, and uh, it's uh, still ticking away. It's bright, sunny weather, clear skies, or mostly clear skies, lots of sun. Things are warming up now. It's very moist still in the morning from all the dew, actually. There's a lot of fog this morning. Uh, it still hasn't quite dried off, but you can see, I'll show you the, 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 the great contrast we're getting from the sunlight warming up by the trees and things. Let's see. So now we're, right now we're on black hot. I actually think it shows up better on white hot under these conditions for some reason. But, I mean, you can, you can kind of see that. Um, now you can see that cave there, a cab I've been pointing out to you. Um, let's look down here. And you can see how, how, how much it comes out. And, and on a bright sunny day, it looks like this for a, a, quite a long time after sunset. It takes a long time for stuff to cool off. Uh, so I've installed the remote control because I said my, as I said earlier, my only complaint was the, the buttons here are kind of hard to find in the dark, and I don't want to. My friend might wear them out by pushing them too much. So over here, I've linked up the remote control, which I don't know if it's even waterproof or not, but I just put it on the side with a with a double sided velcro that came with it, and uh, it just give us your basic functions right here for calibrating the scope, and then this here um, is your zoom. You can press it briefly to, to zoom in, um, which is convenient, or you can push and hold it uh, to swap to the other color palette. Which we just did. So let's go ahead and take a look on white hot mode. 
Yeah, you can see all those trees quite well. All those trees just come out really well. Um, you can see there's the post. You can see there's the drive. Um, and you can see the fence even. That, that slab over there. You can see the fence post uh, being warmed by the sun. Right now it is uh, full full sunlight. It's about uh, six in the afternoon. It's been hot for a long time. You can see the shadows and everything really clearly. Um, and there's huge contrast. We're on white hot right now. And heat signatures from animals are definitely difficult to see um, during the daylight when it's like this. And then let's see, there's an animal over there. You can see it. I got a dog right there. And you can see it, but if it, if it wasn't moving, it doesn't, definitely doesn't stick out at all. Because it's, uh, it's not any warmer than any of the surrounding items with the sun shining on them. Alright guys, so here we are. This is the, um, this is the, the evening after a nice long sunny day. And I'm um, on white hot here. You can see the trees all come out very nicely. And these vertical lines, all these lines you see on the scope, um, you don't really notice them nearly as much with the naked eye than you do with the camera. Okay, here we are. So this is with uh, inverted color palette, so it's black hot. And you can see it actually looks really, really good. Um, let's see how an animal sticks out. There, you can see that black, it actually sticks out better, I think, here on black hot under these conditions. With this much contrast. Because on white hot, there's too many other hot objects after a hot day to be able to see it. But on black hot, um, the animals stick out better. Everything, in fact, looks really good on black hot. I mean, this looks like I, I look, it's like I'm looking during the daytime, practically. But this looks like kind of low-light conditions. Um, I mean, this looks really, really good. Like, I mean... All right, I think you can see from those tests we just did that the effective range for engaging a, uh, a target, a 1.6 meter high target, is uh, about probably 300 yards. Uh, you can easily pick a target out in an open field, and in the woods it's going to be a lot less because simply because the brush obscures your view. Whether you're using a thermal scope or in the daytime with a visual scope, you just can't see that far. Uh, so the, during the daytime, the worst conditions are going to be when it's bright and sunny during the day, and there's lots of other hot objects out there. This, the, the picture looks great, you can see all kinds of scenery in the trees, but the uh, targets really blend in because there's so many other warm objects by the sun. But I find soon as the sun sets, even if it has been blazingly hot all day, or you know the, the sun has been blazing all day and really warmed things up, the, uh, the contrast remains good, but things uh, cool down enough and, and it mellows down enough where targets really stick out well. Um, but I would say whether you go with a Pulsar, a, uh, a FLIR site, or whatever, whatever manufacturer you go with, I found uh, good results with the, the Pulsar. But a thermal weapon sight is going to be a critical part of your tactical toolkit and absolutely essential for nighttime operations. Remember everyone, eight hours a day, it's dark. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.